Imagine Nightmares Revisited. Jeff Ramsey is back in Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New Jersey. Holy crap. Where he checks in on some of his biggest challenges uh, he has ever faced. Oh. They were the most disgusting. That's fucking older than me. Dysfunctional. 86 of French fries. And most distraught restaurants in Kitchen Nightmares history. It ain't must... her fault. It's my fucking fault. First, we return to Cafe Hun in Hampton, Maryland. Can I have everybody's attention? The owner was caught in a nasty battle with the community. I was afraid for my life. What, death threats? And her staff was ready to revolt. You're a rude bitch. Then, we'll visit Chorella's in Philadelphia. Put it up! Let's go! Where the family business was so bad that one owner had completely lost his confidence. I stay in bed because I'm afraid to get up. While his wife had completely lost her patience. Right now, I'm getting mad. And lastly, Jeff Ramsey travels to Montclair, New Jersey to get an update on Leone's. Under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. I'm sad to say that we're closing down Leone's for the night. We're a lazy owner. The major problem here is there's no manager, nobody in control of this restaurant. It's hard for me to really show passion. Was ruining the restaurant that his mother had worked so hard to build. We've already drowned. Get ready for a night of surprising updates. Oh, can I talk about that? As we find out who stayed on the road to success and who veered off, turning the restaurant back into a nightmare. Oh, I'm pissed off. Rotten fruit. We could possibly kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <laughs> Shut the place down! Get out of here! That is amazing! Thank you, Chef. As soon as I leave a restaurant, I'm always wondering whether or not they stuck to the plan. And I know you do also. Tonight, I'm going to show you three restaurants I visited last year, and you're going to be surprised at what I found out. First up, Cafe Hun in Baltimore. Hamden, Maryland, a suburb of Baltimore. When I first arrived, I visited a local radio station to find out the restaurant owner, Denise Whiting, was at war with the community. She had trademarked the term Hun, which is a cultural icon in Baltimore. She was threatening businesses with lawsuits. The lawsuits? I mean, it went that far. She demanded legal fees from somebody that was making tourist stuff with just the word Hun on it. After finding out what I was in for, I mean, she's almost become the anti-Hun. Yes. It was time to go to Cafe Hun and actually meet the owner. All right, I want everybody's attention. Can I have everybody's attention? But before I made it inside, I was faced with a giant, and I mean a giant, pink flamingo. Holy mackerel. Wow, 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 wow. I'd hoped that the restaurant wasn't on its last leg as well. I desperately needed to hear Denise's side of the story. The problem is, I federally registered the Hun as a, as a trademark. People scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. It's got that bad. I mean, I was afraid for my life. Did you not sue anyone? I never sued anybody. You didn't sue anybody? No. Did you threaten to sue anybody? No. But Denise wasn't telling me the truth. I've done my own work before I got here. I did. I. You know See, what? you're not being fair now. After setting us straight, the next step for me was to taste the food. Then I met my lovely server, Amanda. Amanda, love the hair. Thank you. Beautiful. And oh boy, her hair was wonderful. Wow, look at you. They sure do love their hairspray in Baltimore. For the batter's soggy, so they stick to the fish. Sadly, the food was atrocious. It's like a flamingo turd just landed on my plate. It's terrific. And then these stone cold shrimp. Horrible. So the shrimp tastes, they have like a weird aftertaste to it. Like it almost tastes like really? the refrigerator. I don't understand. This is perfect. Perfect? Trust me, they were far from perfect. And I could tell already I was going to have my hands full with Denise. That night at dinner service. This is asparagus, all right? I'm tired of seeing the asparagus in different kinds of ways. You cut off the ends oh and you blanch them. I could not believe how Denise ran her restaurant. Any turkey on the board, 86 the turkey. She was 86 in the whole freaking menu. 86 biscuits, you guys. Item. 86 the pot pie. After item. 86 the catfish. After item. 86 the french fries. I thought she could have 86 me next. 86 Where? the steak. We don't have steak. Oh, my god. Sorry. That was a disaster. How can you let it go this far? 
after seeing how bad a leader Denise was, I decided to talk to her staff about her behavior. She goes up to one of the girls and tells them they're stupid, or she gets up to my face, tell her to fix her hair. She focuses on a lot of the superficial things. She micromanages. It was clear that her very loyal staff were deeply affected by her actions. It was time to confront Denise. Denise, you, um, you're a rude bitch. Ouch. And I'm tired of it. Denise, you're the negative in the restaurant. People don't like you. They did not hold back, but that is exactly what Denise needed to hear. I'm sorry that I've been a bit overbearing to lose this business would be for me to lose my soul. And I can only say that this is the beginning of a new day. Denise's apology was a step in the right direction, but the bigger issue was her relationship with her community. So I hatched a plan. I put together a select group of people that I'd like you to hear from. OK. OK. Please, jump in the car. Headsets on. Denise was forced to listen. She pushes everyone around. She's focused on Denise whining. And if you don't like it, you're going to be sorry. What would it take for this community to embrace Kathy Hunt again? She has to walk away from the trade, the trademark. She has to abandon it. She has a long claim to it. Get say it was back. a mistake. She does not own it. Denise had a big decision to make. Give up the Hun trademark or lose your restaurant. Would she do the right thing? I am so sorry for the animosity and the hatred and everything that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. Please forgive me. That must have taken a lot of courage to, to say that. But you never said you were going to give the trademark back. Yes. Wow. This is amazing. That's, 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 that's kind of stunning. After getting Denise's commitment to change, we were ready to relaunch Cafe Hunt with a new decor. Oh, oh my God. God. A new menu. Mm, that's a look at. Really good. <laughs> and an owner with a new attitude. Great job. You're doing awesome, John. Thank you, Johnny. Beautiful. Cafe Hunt was well on its way to becoming a fixture in the community once again. You're fantastic. I've been given a great gift and an amazing opportunity, and I will be forever grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A thank bloody you. tough week. Last year, if you wanted to see an angry owner at war with the community, then trust me, Cafe Hunt in Baltimore was guaranteed fireworks. Personally, I felt like I was negotiating a treaty as opposed to fixing a restaurant. I'm now back to find out, is there peace? Coming up, has Denise repaired her relationship with her staff and her community? Have we got good news, bad news? She wasn't sincere when she apologized. Oh, no. Or has she gone back to being the tyrant of Baltimore? You know, we've had some issues. It's not a surprise to anybody. I'm on my way to meet Regan and Jojo. They're DJs at the local radio station. These guys really do have their fingers on the pulse in the community. And they're going to give me an update to find out how the locals have responded since Denise Whiting gave up that trademark hunt and what's really happening in that restaurant. Baltimore's Mix 106.5. It's Joe John Reagan in the Mixed Morning Show. And we've got a special guest this morning, as you may have been reading in the papers. Gordon Ramsay's back in town. Yeah, we're going to see what Baltimore thinks about Cafe Hun now. Hi guys, uh, welcome back, back to Baltimore. Good Thank you so much. You. Likewise, good to see you guys. Good to see you again. I'm so happy to be back. Now, the word on the street, Cafe Hun. Have we got good news, bad news in between? Good news. Good news. The good news is there's there's not a lot of news. Which okay. Is, which is really good for Denise. So it's not people just violently angry at her anymore. Right. Right. There are still people who say she wasn't sincere when she apologized. Right. Um, there are still people who say, oh, she didn't give up the trademark. She did give up the trademark. We mm -hmm. know that for a fact. 100%. So there are people that are, just aren't going to be won over. But I think the majority of people are, have come around. Things are back to normal in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and everything's going OK. Um, just as importantly, the restaurant. Um, has anyone been? Any feedback? Um... My wife and I were there a couple of days ago. Oh, good. Uh, we had the crab cake. We had the chicken pot pie. Right. It was good. Right. I saw Denise. 
There was a resurgence in her that I hadn't seen. That was nice to see. Yeah. Cheers. So are you going to head over and talk to her? Yep. Good to see you both. Good to see you. Chef Gordon Ramsay, thanks for joining us this morning on the Judge on Reagan Show. Excellent. Good to see you both. Absolutely. Yeah. That pink flamingo. <sighs> they haven't got rid of that. Look at you two. Welcome How are you, my back, darling? Gordon. Nice to see you. Well. How are you, my darling? I'm great. Huh? Well, dear. Thank you. First of all, this place is heaving. It's wonderful. Let's have a little couple of minutes together somewhere quieter. Okay. Let's go over there in the bar, okay. shall we, in the corner? Wow. That is crazy in there. Um, you look great, by the way. Thank you. I brought you a little present. Can I open it? Uh, please. I'm dying to see what you think. I thought, because you've kept the big one on the outside, <laughs> I'll bring you something a little bit more intimate. Thank you. Mwah. It's good to see you, darling. It just seemed so special. <laughs> Made me think he was thinking about me other than when he's here. <laughs> How are you personally? <sighs> Wonderful. Don't get upset. I know. Come on. I know. I'm just so grateful. Last time, you cried for a different reason. I have people scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. It's got that bad. I mean, I was afraid for my life. This time, you know... <laughs> it's happy cry. Uh, it, it's a happy cry. I felt like for a whole year and a half, I couldn't be part of the community. Sure. And as soon as we did the relaunch, I went right to a community meeting that Monday, and then I just started getting more involved yeah. in the community. And Which is music to my ears. You know, it's like the restaurant is one thing, but... I oh, know. Come here, come here, come here, <laughs> come here, you. Honestly. As soon as I rejoined the community, I really felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders, and I could be me again. Business in general, um, since I last saw you, where are we? Since the relaunch, business picked up about 20%. Good. We're still working to regain people's trust mm -hmm. and get them coming back again, but we've gotten a lot of new people in the door, and, that's, sure. and people that said, oh, we stopped coming, and now we're coming again. Good. The food, the service, uh, how are you feeling there? I've been kind of overseeing things a little bit more, but Oh, no. I've been really good. Because remember, last time it was interference. It was just negative. Oh, come on. Really? What's this, Dottie? Why is it sitting there? Is this for something? Listen, you look great. The restaurant Thank sounds you. amazing. Um, I'd like you to do something special for me now. Go and cook me a special. I'm dying to taste the food. OK. Brilliant. Surprise me. OK. How are you, my Hi. darling? Oh, good to see you. Let's sit down and have a okay. catch up. How are you, my darling? Hi. Wow, you look great. Oh, thank good you. to see you. Thank you. That looks amazing. Thanks for the compliment, Chef Ramsay. <laughs> I'm dying to ask, how's she been? Much better. But this yeah, is no, real. No, no, no. It's a truth. It's a lot easier to work here now. It's not good. stressful. Good. And she's not coming in nitpicking. No, she's not picking at us. Bitch festing. No. Giving asparagus lessons in the middle of service. Oh, <laughs> This is asparagus, all right? You cut off the ends oh and you blanch them. That must happen happened again, I'll have you know. Oh, you're kidding me. No. But she no. walked away, Gordon. She walked she away. She walked away. She walked away. Is she still 86 in things? 86 the jerky. 86 the french fries. 86 the catfish. No. 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 Now it's not like that. Now they don't have a reason to hate her. It's, it is a lot easier for us. Good. How much has she changed? A lot, yes. Is she supporting you more? She is, and she's also staying home more. She cooked for us, she waited on us. Good. She's great. Well, management got invited home for dinner. Yeah. Yes. Wow. To yes. her house. To her house. Denise is a lot easier to talk to. She's more receptive to our comments. She's turned it around. She really has. And what is that? It's a guacamole burger. A guacamole burger. Nice. Look at that. They love the burgers. Mm. Wow. I love it. That's delicious. Is it good? Mm. I get the opportunity to cook for Chef Ramsay, and he really likes it. It makes me feel really good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so pleased to see the delight on Denise Whiting's face, the fact that not only is she a part of the community again, but you, as the locals, feel part of this restaurant as well. Incredible. Thank you. I'd like to introduce a very special guest. Give a warm welcome, please, Baltimore City Councilman Nick Mosby. Sir. Good to see you. Thank 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 you. Th
nice day. Thank you. And on this day, I would like to present you with an official Baltimore City resolution in recognition of your selfless dedication and continued support to the community and the city of Baltimore. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate the recognition really and truly. And I know that, you know, we've had some issues. And I really appreciate the fact that I've been given a second chance because not everybody gets a second chance in this lifetime. And I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to work with Gordon Ramsay. And I feel like you've given me my life back and my restaurant back. And I, I will be forever grateful to you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Star. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Well done, darling. I feel like I've earned the right to be happy again. I might be crying right now, but I'm really happy inside. I'm very proud of what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Mwah. Take care. Good to see you. Okay, best wishes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Let me tell you what really happened here. This was a PR nightmare that became a PR miracle. And if only Denise can always remember to be part of the solution and not the problem, then trust me, Cafe Hunt has a very, very bright future in Baltimore. That is the biggest fucking flamingo I've ever seen in my entire life. What a monster. Next, Chef Ramsay returns to Philly, where Tommy DeFina was a broken man, completely depressed. I stay in bed because I'm afraid to get up. I'm afraid who's going to call me Anthony? Who's going to shut my gas off? Has Tommy remained the confident man that Chef Ramsay built up? Has Tommy personally made any changes? Or has he let Chorellos fall apart? Come on, look! That wasn't me! South Philadelphia, home to Chorellos. Owned by husband and wife, Tommy and Dina Dafino. Shortly after meeting the couple... But what's missing from the restaurant? We don't know what's missing. Customers. I think our food is better than the area's food around here. It's quality, right. it's fresh. Right, and I stand behind our food. I could tell they were really in love with their food. So, He's... what's wrong with the restaurant? I don't agree with the way he runs the kitchen. There's not enough business. It's just... and that's not the issue. And his wife was so frustrated with him and their business. The issue is you can't better your business the way you're running it. We'll try. Right away, I could tell this man was broken. But now, I wanted to get to tasting this amazing food. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Wow. There's so much veal on here. Veal cutlet Johnny. Veal Parmesan. Veal cutlet with roasted peppers. Veal scalapino. Veal southern vodka. Veal charella. Veal sinatra. Why not add a veal Madonna or a veal bocelli? I mean, Come on. While waiting for my lunch, I decided to have a little walk around. What's that? You are kidding me. And what did I discover? A full-blown gym. Oh, shit! <laughs> Man, what's this guy doing? Tommy? He's in your office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you work out with him? Yeah. So what's this? Yeah. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. There's holes in the wall. He's punched some holes in the walls. He'll say it wasn't him. It was. That wasn't me. Man. That wasn't me. And Are that on see? the wall there? That's my golf. Oh, shit. Not only was it a gym, it was a driving range as well. Oh! Yeah, it's a shank. <laughs> OK, back to the food. Your Sinatra. Thank you, Dave. Man, that's dreadful. Mm -hmm. This is chewy. Okay. Let's get one thing straight. The food was not good. That's ghastly. What a disgusting combination. It's like someone's thrown up on my plate. Tommy and Dina failed to see that. I still stand, I by, still stand, by, I still stand by my food. The food was disgusting. Well, I, I disagree with that. That's your opinion. Come on. Uh, hello? Can somebody say denial? You no, must... I'm not in denial. You are going to have to get your head out your ass. And it went downhill from there. He's putting too much oil. I don't want to go back there. Felipe, no. It's just all swimming in oil. And you weren't going to say anything. Hey, Tommy! Throughout dinner, Tommy avoided the problems. It's greasy and warm. That's all right. I think you need to go back in the back and check on your cock. Keep going back there. No, and just... I'm afraid. He literally ran away from the problems. All right, now I'm getting mad. And Dina had no choice but to step in. Put it up! Let's move! I don't know what you're doing! 
give me table 10 and give me the pasta special. Oh, my God. Dysfunctional owners and a dysfunctional kitchen. I knew if there was any hope of saving Tommy, I needed the help of his family. Hello. The double Ds. Dina and Danae. I came by here this morning to talk about Tommy. We need to get him back. Hey, good morning. Uh, Take a seat. Listen, I love you. I know you love me, babe. I want you back. I want me back, too. <laughs> I'm not the same person I was in my whole you life. You have I've to been... get that person. You got to reach inside, Tommy, and pull it out. We want you to be happy. We love you. We can make great changes, but unless you're back, let me go and work right now. Okay, I want to fight. Yeah. Okay, good. Dina and Danae were able to build up his confidence, and finally, we were getting somewhere. Tommy was ready for change. The next day, we relaunched. Shirellas. Come on, come on. Let's go tonight, guys. Let's go. Come on. It was now up to Tommy to prove to everyone he can run his restaurant. How are we looking here? How are we looking here? Coming right now. Table 20. Table, follow me. Table 20. Here we go. And he did just that. We're good in there. We're good in there. We're good in there. Nice, good. nice. Good, good, good. good. Lasagna, baby. Good job tonight. Great job. I'm the boss. Last year, when I came to Gorillas in South Philly, I met a husband and wife team. They're about to literally give up on their own restaurant. And let me tell you, things couldn't have got any worse. We had a phenomenal week and made some unbelievable changes. We're about to find out if any of them are lasting. Coming up. Yeah! Has the rebuilding of Gorillas destroyed the marriage? How's the relationship between you and Tommy? And later, it's an unexpected revisit not to be missed. Why is he lying to me? Oh, I'm pissed off. It's great to be back in South Philly. I'm on my way to Chirellas, an Italian restaurant run by Tommy and Dina Defino. Now, last time I was here, Tommy was so depressed, and Dina, she was just a nervous wreck. We made some substantial changes, not just to the restaurant, but to the owners as well. I'm back to check in, and hopefully they've kept up that momentum. Hello. Hello. Wow, how are you? Oh, wonderful. Good to see you. Wonderful. Good to see you. Are you well? Yeah. Oh, you well? The best place. Yeah. It's bumping. Atmosphere is amazing. How have you been? Good. Yeah? Yeah. You're quiet. You seem calm. Last time I saw you, you were a nervous wreck. And it was almost like you hated being here. Yeah. It was very stressful. How's the business been? 20% better. Wow. So 20% up, which yes. is great news, positive. How do we take it to another level? How do you get it up 40%? Um, I think a liquor license. That's what we're working on. Have you been saving? Yeah. Just imagine what the business yes. could do if it did have yeah. that liquor license. We're getting there. Once we get that liquor license, we'll be able to be open later. Yeah. Have a happy hour. We'll be, like, set. Um, how's the relationship between you and Tommy? I don't agree with the way he runs the kitchen. You can't better your business the way you're running it. I didn't think she felt like that. On a scale of 1 to 10? 10. Ten. Ten. Seriously? Seriously. Good. And his confidence is back? Yeah, thank God. Where is he? I think he's down this way. Once we changed in here... Let me get him. Tommy transitions into the new person. All right, buddy. Table 5, we need 5 and 6. Make the salads up, all right? How many soups? Tommy! How many soups? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good, let's get out of the chat. Come here. How are you? This way, where are we going? Down to the office. Who's this? Yeah. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Man. That wasn't me. Watch your head. Okay. Wow. A lot better, right? Look at this. They're, they're the old marks. They're the old marks. What? Are they? They're the old ones, huh? Oh, no, no. And Prom promise me? I haven't hit nothing. Um, walls be fixed. Oh, oh, damn. Uh, uh, that wasn't oh. me. Can I talk about that? Uh, for fuck's sake. Uh, that ain't a fist. It's a ball, I swear to God. A ball? It's in there. I swear to God. Come on, look. Perfect. I promise you, all right? You pull me out. I'll take a Larry detector. Test. Honestly. That's yeah, a shame. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bench pressing that. I can do it a couple of times, but okay. I'm hurt. Let me uh, see. All right, I'm gonna do it easy for you. Look at that. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Is that good enough? You're still in great shape, I'm telling you. I walk in, the place is buzzing. Last time I was here, it was more than 20% down. You're now 20% up, um, saving for a liquor license. 
Yeah, so you're putting enough money away each month to save for that. I am starting. Yeah. We, were still, we were still behind. I mean, you know, the electric and the gas and all that goes first. But we were up from last year, and that's what I look at. Yeah. Just, as long as we're up, it's positive. Exactly. There's things more control, less anger. Are you happier inside? Definitely. <laughs> Can you see? I'm definitely, from before, man, emotionally in a way better place. Way better. You need to get back to work. That place is full up there. <laughs> I miss you. It's not easy to find your manhood when things are going bad. And he brought that back. He brought, he brought it back for me. Come on. Oh! Hi. Hi. No. No. Are you well? I'm well. I'm real wow. well. Place it's, is busy. Yeah, it's been good. I actually like coming to work now. You do? Yeah. I'm so pleased to hear that. Yeah. Tommy looks less stressed. Is he better? Yeah, he's a lot better. Is he? Oh my god, yeah. He learned how to take control of his business without letting the business take control of him. And that's the biggest change in Tommy. Thank you, Madonna. You're welcome, Lasagna. Well, that looks amazing. And Thank you. chicken piccata. Wow. Tommy, sure. sit down. That looks fantastic. Dina. Take a seat, my darling. I'm dying to taste this. When was this made? Today. 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 Yeah. Fresh, fresh, Today. fresh. That is delicious. A really, really good indeed. Um, last time I was here, he was walking around with his head in the sand. You were still giving your food 10 out of 10. And I stand behind our food. The food was disgusting. How are you feeling now? I feel the nails is 10 out of 10. It's and 10 I'm 10 happy 10. now. And I'm happy because he's happy. With Tommy and I working together, running a business together, raising a family together, we're more confident together. This is the happiest that Tommy and I have been because we're able to communicate better. And I'm not um, sugarcoating anything. Coming back and seeing exactly where both of you are now, it makes me really proud. I want you to really succeed. So I'm personally going to make a contribution to you both to help get that liquor license. Is he serious? Seriously. We can be 20% up now without the liquor license. Get that liquor license. We're on the road. Chef Ramsey is a great guy, and I couldn't have helped us any more. I couldn't possibly have thought. But for him to make a contribution towards the liquor license is like just awesome. It really is. Brilliant. Well, good to see you both. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Chef Ramsey coming in here has been more than a life changing experience. It's been unbelievable. And he really, he's 100% behind me, which is a great feeling. Great feeling. All right, listen, keep it up, will you? Yes, definitely. Yeah, seriously? Yes. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Look after Thank yourself. Thank you for, for here. Seriously. Take care. Oh. Yeah, oh, and, and listen. Easy one. Uh, hey, Easy. And, and stop putting those holes oh, in the wall, oh, OK? Man. Take care. Thank you, chef. I love you. Wow. I am so surprised. I mean, I had my doubts about Tommy, but he has really stepped up and taken the bull by the horns, and now is in control of his business. And Dina? She is completely transformed. And as a couple, they are united, stronger than ever before. And I really believe that Chirella is now is on its way to being back on top where it belongs. Montclair, New Jersey, home to Italian restaurant Leone's, run by mother and son, Michael and Rose Leone. We owe $1,400 for the meat, overdue for the past month. What are you going to do, Michael? You tell me. What do you want me to do? When I first walked into the restaurant, um, what's that thing there? That's like... uh, my old uh, television that I watch all the games on. You watch the games on there? Yes, sir. I was absolutely stunned by what I saw. Do you think that's a good impression for the customers walking in for the first time? Michael just seemed clueless. A lazy owner watching telly was bad enough, but the decor was just as hideous. Oh, my God. Is that a baby? Yes. I mean, they say that there's never an ugly baby. I think I just found one. But that's not you, is it? No, sir. How are you? How are you? Too sweet. And then there was Mama Rose. Likewise. Nice. Jeff Ramsey's hot. I've been married three times. I need number four. Yeah. 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 She was quite a character. I can't start to even think about turning this place around until I get to the bottom of the issues. The major problem here is there's no manager. There are no nobody in control of this restaurant. I take care of payroll, I take care of receiving, payroll. doing the menus. Wow. Paul Mama Rose, she depended on Michael to run the restaurant. Basically, the staff is running this restaurant right now. I, I disagree. But he wasn't running anything except maybe his mouth. 
Are you here every day? Except Monday, yeah, I'm here every day. Right, so you're here six days a week. Across those six days a week you're in here, you're here, what, 12, 14 hours a day? No, no, no. <laughs> How many? I work the dinner shift from, like, uh, 5 to 10, 5 to 11. So five hours a day. How many of them do you sit down? Depending on the situation. Roughly? Three. So you're on your feet for two hours a day? Yes. Holy crap. In order to get the whole picture, I decided to order the whole menu. Oh, my God. Holy crap. How many items on the menu? Over 100. 100? I mean, physically, the appearance? Oh, come on, guys. Can I have a knife before, please? Maybe a bag. A fucking fit bag. And while the dishes looked awful, there's no seasoning in there. Everything's bland. Bland. It's bland. Pasta's bland. They tasted even worse. Ah. Ah. Duh. It's like a fucking flip-flop. Right. Are you crunching grits? Yes, yes. I think it's good. You think it's good? People like that recipe. They love it, actually. I had heard enough. Michael was clearly delusional. I'll be back later, yeah? I'd like to catch a plane out of here right now. Even though I wanted to leave for good, I came back for dinner. What is that? Big mistake. I think it's veal, Sean. You think it's veal? Pretty sure it's veal. You didn't put it in there. It looks like meat thrown in a pan. But what is it, though? I don't know. It's not labeled. How could you not know? Stuff what? Mushrooms. Smell that. Smell it. That's fucking older than me. Smell it. Go on. I had seen enough. The kitchen was so disgusting, I had no choice but to... Shut the place down. Under no circumstances can we continue to serve food. I'm just embarrassed, us. I'm fucking embarrassed. Everybody, I'm sad to say and embarrassed to say that we're closing down Leone's for the night. Leone's never been shut down. Very embarrassed by it. Poppy won't sleep tonight over this. I'm angry at myself. I think as the boss of the restaurant, it was just irresponsible. I'm going to turn the ship around. My mother put in almost 20 years of her life in this place. Her spirit, her money. I'm crushed that I let her down. And I want to make it good. But the truth is, I don't know if I could turn it around. And it's a scary feeling. It really is. Come on. So with Michael's eyes finally open, we spent some valuable time in the kitchen together. A touch of olive oil in there, yeah? Salt and pepper cooked on the bone. Why are we cooking it on the bone? More flavor. Right, get that pan nice and hot. How do you know when the oil's ready, Chef? I like smoke coming off there. You've got the sear in there. Wow. Mm. That is nice. olive oil. It just melts in your mouth. I think it's time for change. And I want to be the best Italian restaurant in town. For the first time, I saw this lazy owner making a positive change. And then I knew he was ready to run his restaurant. You may recognize him from sat on his ass outside watching television. But that guy's gone now. You have a new Michael. Let's go. With a new modern look, a concise menu. Are we ready to order? <laughs> Michael stepped up and not only surprised his staff. Right now, listen, I need one part deli, one cod, and one orchette. And then we'll worry about everything else. But that I need now. Yes, sir. But his mother, too. Mama Rose, are you happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. Look after your son. I will. Michael proved with hard work he can run Leone's. Three important words that I need you to remember. Stay the course. Stay the course, chef. I can't hear you. Chef, in my restaurant, I'm going to stay the course. Good. I'm back in New Jersey, hoping that he's kept his promise or has reverted back to his old lazy ways. Back in Montclair, New Jersey, to check on the Italian restaurant Leone's, run by owner Mama Rose and her son, Michael. Last time I was here, all Mama Rose wanted was for her son to step up and actually run the business. It almost didn't happen, but we finally turned him to the leader. Time to check in if he's continued to make his mother proud. How are you? Hey! Welcome How are you, back, sir? Good, How are you good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Wow, this place is busy. Yes, sir. Love the buzz. That's good. Well, let's, uh, let's step through there and have a little uh, catch-up. I'm very excited to see Chef Ramsey today and tell him about the progress we've made in the restaurant and all the beautiful changes we have here at Leone's. First things first, where's the television? That's so cool. uh, my old uh, television that I watch all the games on. Seriously? I promise you the day you left, there was no television here. No television. In the entire restaurant, my word. How have you been? I've been doing well. As soon as you left, the buzz around the neighborhood and the food was fantastic. Right. The new dishes flew off the menu. Good. 
I wake up energized. I'm going to the restaurant supply houses, buying all the fresh ingredients, looking up new recipes, trying new things for me and my cooks. There's a better, stronger relationship That's there. Fantastic. I started a delivery campaign. You started the campaign? Yes, sir. I did a menu, mailed them out to the surrounding towns, and it's been very beneficial. You have been busy. So this is a complete revolution. You are so much more hands-on now than you ever were before, right? Oh, huge. Big difference. Night and day. Diana, is he lazy? Yes. John, is he lazy? Yes, sir. I feel like that's, it's finally my business, and I'm not running my mother's business. That's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. And where's the business sitting now? Uh, it's probably up 40% since last time. 40%? You are working hard. Yes, sir. What's the my word. This is a new Michael. Energized, my Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you are still energized. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah, what a lovely surprise. <laughs> Hello, my darling. Hi. How are you? You look great. Thank you. Look at you. Oh, my goodness, me. <laughs> Come over. I've missed you. I've missed you. And you've lost weight. 75 pounds. 75 pounds. That's incredible. Well done. And you're still hot. Uh, stop. Come on. I'm a year older. You don't, you don't want to go chasing men at 45 years of age. Uh, Michael, I'm hungry. Yeah. I shall make you something. Good. Welcome All back right, to Leonis. Good to see Good you. Good to well. see you again. Yes, great. great. Thank you. Have you got two minutes? Yes, absolutely. Mama Rose looks amazing. She looks fabulous. God bless her. Michael told me he was here first thing in the morning, he's here last thing at night. Is he really working that hard? He still shows up at his usual time, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Oh, no. Oh, no. Back to the beginning. Why is he lying to me? Maybe he's scared. Unreal. Hello, Hi, darling. How, how are, are you? you? I wasn't good since I just heard that. Uh, take a seat, please. I had a chat with Michael around the corner. They told me he's working so hard. What time is he coming in? Comes in at 6, 6.30. That's a plus for him. Wow. Wow, 6.30? Yeah. I mean, crazy, you can't run a business and coming in at 6.30. You have to set that example to the staff. Is he helping with payroll? No, he doesn't do any of it. Damn. Infantry? No, nothing, nothing. Oh, Jesus. So he's not stepping up? We're here at 9 o'clock today. We swept the floor. We mopped the floors. We set it up. Bloody hell. And it's he, so annoying. He, he was physically the last one in here. Honestly. And he found TVs across the street. He found TVs across the street? What do you mean? In the bar. In the bar. In the bar. Oh, jeez. So he goes across to the yeah. sports bar yeah. to watch TV? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yes. He's but, still Michael. Uh, he's still Michael. Oh, oh so truly. Honestly? Yeah. That's so sad. You can paint stripes on a horse, but that doesn't make it a zebra. Like, just because yeah. you gave us a little facelift, he's still the same person underneath. I mean, we all love Michael, but unless he steps up, we could destroy it. I'm so disappointed. He did not stay the course. He toward the day you've left. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm pissed off. He needs somebody to tell him what to do. Right. Leave it to me. Thank you. I appreciate the catch-up. I'm hoping uh, Gordon Ramsay would be able to help Michael and maybe give Michael another kick, because Michael needs another kick. OK, chef. Today, we have a mozzarella caprice. Nice. And our homemade eggplant parmesan. Wow. Thank you. Enjoy, sir. Thank you. What a difference. What a difference. What the fuck is that? Oh, my God. The chilies. <coughs> Modern, clean, tasting. And are you that involved in the kitchen now? Yes. These are both my dishes, so I hope you enjoy them, yeah. That is delicious. That's good news. Unfortunately, here's some bad news. Whilst I'm excited about the buzz, business has been up 40%. Delivery's working brilliantly. I've just heard from John and Trudy. Everything you told me about working so much harder is not what they think. My question to you is, why bullshit me through there? I didn't bullshit you, sir. Listen, you're not manning up. You changed course the day I left. What time do you come in every day? 4.35 o'clock. Trudy's saying sometimes it's 6.30. 
On certain days, chef, not every day. On any day? Mm hmm You gotta be here before the staff. How many times have I said that? Are you scheduling the payroll? Are you helping out with those? No, I kept that as it is. Right now, chef, I'm just more concentrating on the food. The atmosphere. You cannot concentrate on the food when you rock up at 6.30 in the evening. Mama Rose, I'm sorry, but I'm disappointed. You have to be tough. You need to be a leader. You need to be in here before your staff. You need to show that commitment. They're loyal members that have been here for a long time. They don't hate you, they just want a commitment from you. I'm sorry, Mama Rose. I'm sure you've got work to do. I'm not impressed, Michael. Up to now, I haven't been saying the course. It's very hard to admit that in front of my mom. I should be more hands-on with the food, with the specials, with the servers, and the overall business. Chef, I just want to tell you that I'm sorry. There is areas I could really concentrate on more time, and I don't want to say it in front of my mother. I don't want to make her any more nervous as she is, but I really want to tell you that you are right. I could put definitely more commitment into this restaurant and do a better job. I feel like I'm letting it down. I know, but there's a, there's, a, there's a lazy streak in you. When things are going well, that's when you've got to work harder. I set an example that I've got to work harder than my staff. Jump back in there and nail it. Yes, sir. Please? You have my word. I want to make you proud. Don't let me down. And I don't know. let yourself down. And don't let your mother down. You got it. OK, take Thank care. Thank you for coming back, Chef. Excellent. I believe that Chef Ramsey gave me a little bit of tough love today because he really does want me to succeed. He doesn't want to coddle me. He wants me to keep on driving going forward. Damn. I'm a little surprised to hear Michael slip back to some of his old habits. And his staff clearly need more help. And without more opening up shortly, business is going to continue to grow. So my only hope now is he steps up and leads Leone's on the path to success. But more importantly, God bless Mama Rose. In the days that followed, Michael kept his promise to Chef Ramsay and is putting in more hours at the restaurant. Now, only time will tell if he will stick to his word. If Chef Ramsay visits again, he's going to see a more committed Michael that's more in tune with his staff. I'm going to make him proud and make this visit succeed. Three restaurants, three different stories, but so far, all on the road to success. In the restaurant business, you're never out of the woods. The good news is they are all heading in the right direction. Good night. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to the historical Old Hitching Post in Hanson, Massachusetts. What a disaster. Where he faces off with an owner so stubborn. Fresh food doesn't taste better. Frozen. It doesn't matter if it's fucking frozen or not. So delusional. It's an insult to America. In this area, that's what they love. He doesn't even realize he is the reason his restaurant is failing. Don't tell me that. Owner Tom bought the eatery for his daughter, Andrea. It's his way or no way. You really upset me a lot. But six years later, he refuses to let her run it. I can do this. You're not ready to take over. What? Instead, he remains a control freak. Quiet. Don't never do that. And while the food is inedible, look at it. And always frozen. Disgusting. Tom is far from concerned. There's nothing wrong with that. Come on. Chef Ramsay is thoroughly frustrated. You're if I go over such here a and fucking blockhead. And no matter what he says, why don't you just admit that it's wrong? It's not wrong. Tom refuses to listen. I don't care who you are, Ramsay or no Ramsay. It's fight time in Hanson Mass. I'll get in the ring and fight you every fucking day. But this may be a battle Chef Ramsay is unable to win. I'm going to keep fighting. You know I'm going to do that. What is that? You serving rotten fruits. No capacity to kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <coughs> Shut the place down. Get out of here! That is amazing. Thank you, Chef. Hanson, Massachusetts, a tightly knit community just 25 miles outside of Boston. In 2005, restaurateur Tom Caceres bought one of the fixtures of the town, a beloved restaurant called the Old Hitching House. My first restaurants, they were very successful. And then I wanted to own another one to pass it over to my oldest daughter. She wanted to become a restaurant owner like her father. Good afternoon, Old Hitching Post. Running and owning my own restaurant has always been my dream. So I was extremely excited when we came to the old hitching post. Right this way, please. But even though my dad bought this place for me, my father does have the final say. What did you do? I've been working in the kitchen. What no, did you do? No, what did I told you? You gotta make sure water comes Janice in. is in the front. But I want you to be there too. Well, why don't you go? Because, no, you. My daughter, as good as she is, 
she doesn't know what it takes to run a big restaurant like this. Let's say I will leave tomorrow. My daughter it won't last three months. And that's the very truth. Tom will say Andrea doesn't know how to pay the bills. Andrea doesn't know what she needs for cash flow. Key point missing. Tom doesn't allow her to be a part of that. He thinks he's the only one that could run the restaurant and not anyone else. Andrea, if you're doing what I tell you, make sure your customer. Dad. Check. Relax. Right now. Relax. Tom runs his business like it's a small country he owns. The beef tips, people don't love them. Don't tell me that. My father makes people crazy. Do you do that all the time behind my back without me knowing? To him, the right decision is his decision. Don't never do that. Oh. Go back to your work, all of you. He tells us I'm the best at this. I'm, I know what I'm doing. Who are you? You're stupid. That was the most stupid thing I ever seen in this kitchen the longest I've been here. Look, my way is the only way. Why? Because my way is the right way. Because of Tom, there are a lot of things that aren't done the right way. The way we handle food, the, what comes in through those doors, it's not always the best product. A lot of it's not good at all. Dan, they don't like it. It's kind of hard when we have all this unquality product. I don't really know why we don't do any business. Since the day I bought your hitching post, I just keep her money out of my pocket just to stay open. My God. Who barely make it. And what are you going to do? Pay the bills and get it over with it. I would have never signed up for this had I known that almost seven years into it, he would still be in charge. But we can't walk away because we've invested so much in it, so much time, so much money. But I don't know what we're going to be left with. Tom is anxious to meet up with Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay, I'm right here. So he has volunteered to pick him up and give him an early morning briefing on the old hitching post. Whereabouts are you from? Corfu. Wow. The restaurant. It's Greek, right? No, no. Oh. It's an American. American, American food, but I have some Greek dishes. OK. Yeah. This is my third restaurant. Right. I've been very successful my other two. Well done. How long did you buy it? Six years. OK. I bought it for my daughter. As a, as a gift? Uh... Well, I bought it for her future, for, for her, her future. family. So she's running the restaurant now? But she's not running by herself. I'm right next to her. OK. I, I need to educate her a lot. She needs so much to learn about this business. I have a problem. She doesn't realize how much it takes to run a restaurant. Right. How many hours you got to put into the restaurant. She's not hungry for it. No, she's not. Wow. She's not. I give her a lot of authority. But she's not a hard-working person. Is she spoiled? She's not spoiled, but stop it. How's the restaurant doing now? Awful. Awful. I mean, awful, awful. I try to buy quality food. Good. That's very good. We try to give generous portion and reasonable prices, but wow. it doesn't seem to go nowhere. Jesus. And this is the honest truth. How much money are you losing a week? <sighs> are you ready? Please. Seven to $8,000. A week? A week. 30000 a month? Yes. Exactly. Jesus. Exactly. It's a disaster. This is your third restaurant. The previous two were successful. The third Very one, successful. you bring your daughter in, and it's starting to go down. Correct. That's, That's the honest truth. This is it. The size of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, thanks for the update. And be upfront and be honest with me so I can get to the problem straight away. What you see is what you get. Look at this place. Chef Ramsay. How are you, my darling? Very well indeed. Thank and first so name much. is? Janice. I'm the manager. You're the manager? I am indeed. Right. Um, Tom picked me up at the uh, train station. Oh, my. Don't believe everything you're told. Oh, really? Sure. Oh, damn. Because he, he was local. Oh, please. Tom is a person who feels that he knows what's best. OK. Um, let me sit down. Please. Right this way. I don't think Tom has it within him to be open to change. Will he listen to Chef Ramsay? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Hello. How are you? Good, me Andrea, nice to meet you. likewise. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Let's catch up. Uh, obviously, um, I was grateful for Dad to come pick me up. Yeah. So he is um, instrumental in setting this up for you. Yes, I always wanted to do this. I love well, people. Uh, your role, personally, what is that? Um, I come in here, I manage the front of the house, um, our functions that we do. I deal with the public. He said he runs the restaurant. 
Yes. But I mean, even after six years, you'd think that you've got up to speed in terms of trying to run this place. I can handle it and try to make it more successful, but my father's not ready to pass the buck over. Really? I can't do um, much of anything. On most parts, my hands are tied. It's just he's having a hard time backing down. Ooh, wow, because he let it slip that you weren't that passionate about running this. Oh, I think he's extremely wrong about that. Why would he I tell have no me idea that? why he would say something like that. Because he sees, you know, I work really hard in here to make it more successful. I've got my husband to help me, and I think that hey, we're... Husband? My husband works in here also. Okay, where does he work? He works uh, in the kitchen on the line. Um, Dad also mentioned that you're stubborn. What are you stubborn about? It's his way or no way. That's why he says I'm stubborn, because I have different ideas and I have different views. But he has taken away a lot of my desire to do things and the the willingness and the drive that I had when we first came in here because um, I am held back. You know, I'm stuck. That's frustrating. Right, but there seems to be a, a butting of heads that we're not making headway. Is Tom nearby? Is he in Let the kitchen? Let me get him for you. Something that doesn't quite stack up. When we first came in here, this was my baby. But little by little, he's slowly draining some of the drive that I had for it. Um, sit down, please. Thank you. You said I wasn't passionate? I didn't, uh, I didn't mean like that at all. What I wanted to say is you're not ready to take over. Why aren't I ready to take over? First of all, you don't realize how much it takes a restaurant, the hours, and the money. Dad, you've got to be kidding. I don't know how many hours and stuff. I don't see everything. I've been by your side for all these years. The experience is not there yet, Andrea. So how many years did you think that I needed an experience <clears throat> for the restaurant that you bought me? What do you think is going to happen in this business that hasn't happened in the previous seven years? Who's the stubborn one in this relationship? Andrea. And she gets it from? Tom. From her father, Bud. First of all, none of you or your husband are ready to face a restaurant with a very lot of business we do. First of all, you don't even know. That's our fault that we do very little business. We need to fix things, Dad. OK, why don't you fix them for seven years? You were here. Yeah, how can I fix what you're not allowing me to fix? What do you mean I don't allow you, Andrea? What do you allow me to do? I give every right. For what in here? I, I have you... to ask you to get ink. You don't even know when you write a check how much money is in a, in a safe there. Uh... Because you take all the money. Right. I have but no what control I'm over is... anything else. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, do you ever sit down and do your numbers? How can you expect me to know what needs to be done when you were doing all of that? No, no, no. This is a big issue right now. And you really upset me a lot. Uh, no, you're upset. I'm me. working for my money tonight for you. <sighs> if you were ready enough to say to me, Dad, sit home this week. I That's do. three months off. What? I want to work and I want to control the rest. Really? How many come on, We've Andrea. said that to you. Step down. You don't need to come in so much. I can do this. Dad, we've already had this conversation like two years ago. We never did. We, we never did. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, you're not ready to take power. That's not true. Thank you. Chef Ramsay has just discovered that Tom and Andrea are clearly not on the same page about Andrea's capabilities. My father told me that I wasn't passionate. How can we be when he sucks the fucking life out of you? And while it's way too early to know who's right, the time has come to pass judgment on the food. Hi there. Hello. First name is? Carla. Carla, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Hanson. Grew up okay, right please. here. Been here uh, 26 years now. Wow. I've been cool. with the first owners, and now That's Andrea and Tom. Are those two always passing heads? They are, Chef. They are. Yeah. So, yeah. but anyways. OK, let's start off. What would you recommend? Cranberry haddock, Chef, because we are in cranberry world down here. Uh, cranberry haddock? Yes. I'll go for that. OK. You've got to try the meatloaf. Yes. And then lobster ravioli, made on site? Yes, Chef. It's made on site. It's fresh. Ravioli. Fresh ravioli. Oh, wow. Let's try one of them as well. OK. Thank Thanks. you, Chef. Tom makes us say that, yes, everything is fresh here. Let's prepare everything we need to do. It's not true. All right, Danny. Pero, uh, double check the salt. Chef Ramsay would love everything on my menu. 
is excellent food. That's good. You got the lobster ravioli coming? It's yes, coming, we do. Yeah. Minute away. Good. I know we're in the uh, area of cranberry, but my God, from napkins to the walls, it's cranberry OD. Wow, that was quick. This is our lobster ravioli. This is the homemade ravioli. Uh, Listen, OK, I apologize for that. The lobster is not fresh. The lobster's not fresh. You told me it was. It's frozen. It's frozen. It's frozen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not even uh, hot in the middle. Mm. Oh dear. Oh, I can't do that to my tummy. It's dreadful. Obviously, store bored. Yes, Jeff. They're nasty. That didn't even get swallowed. Sorry about that. Thank you, Carla. Why would you come to a restaurant to order store bored product? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, Chef Dan. Yes. He spit it out. Listen, the longest I own the place, I never heard one complaint. Never once. Next, cranberry haddock. Cranberry. Lemon on this one, honey. That looks good, Carla. Right, what is this? We have the cranberry haddock. Oh, cranberry haddock. Yes. Good. Carla, come on. It looks like some bear shot in the woods. Really? And what's the water coming up? I mean, look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. I can't believe I'm eating this. Oof. Watery and bland. It is absolutely disgusting. Mm. I'm sorry. Raw. God, they're dreadful. Look at that. Bland, undercooked. And as for that mess, mm. soggy, wet, and just depressing. Ugh. Disaster. What a mess. OK, uh, we'll yeah. check on your next course for you. Thank you, Carla. God, that was gnarly. He doesn't like the cranberry haddock. What is wrong with our cranberry haddock? The cranberry was not good. He doesn't like it, no. I eat it once a week. People love it. People taking them home. They eat today, and they take it two, three orders home. The chef Ryan's didn't like it. This is the meatloaf. Oh, meatloaf. Thank you. When, when was this one made? This was made today, meatloaf. Today? Yes. OK. Enjoy. Seasoning, dry, horrible texture. Doesn't feel like a meatloaf was made today, let me tell you. Was the meatloaf made today? No, meatloaf was made God knows how long and then frozen. Don't even tell me that. Are you sure that was made today, darling? It was not, Chef. It's frozen. It's yes. frozen. Frozen. Carla, why are you doing this to me? Sorry about that. It's bland. It's bland. just okay. yuck. Yuck. Okay. It doesn't really freeze that well, meatloaf. Who makes that? Chef Dan. And has Chef Dan had his tongue removed? Well, thanks, Danny. OK. And here we go. What's wrong with this? This is actually Chef Danny said it was dry and overcooked. We do freeze it. And you think you should lost your taste buds. Give me a break. Chef Ramsey destroy every dish I offer him. He insulted me. <sighs> I don't care who you are. Ramsey or no Ramsey. Danny, where's the kitchen? When you insult me, better be ready to explain yourself. Hi, guys. Come around. And this is? I'm Dan. Dan. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin. Kevin. I'm Spiros. Spiros? Nice so, oh, the Andrew's husband? Yep. Excellent. Come over, guys, please. I am absolutely disgusted. The food is outdated and bland. The lobster ravioli, disgusting. I don't understand the mentality of serving frozen shit that you buy in. Dan. Help me understand the madness. I can't even answer to you on that right. one right now. It's a setup for disaster. Had it with cranberries. That cranberry glaze, watery spinach, 
disgusting raw sweet potatoes, the grilled meatloaf. When was that cooked? Every two weeks, we end up making a batch or so. It gets portioned and then frozen. How sad. I mean, how sad. Yep. When you freeze cooked meat, what happens to it as it defrosts? It dries out. Then you grill it. What happens to that again? Dries it out even dries a little bit more. It's gross. It's almost impossible to make a, a loaf of meatloaf every day or every other day. You cannot do it. So we make it in batches of two weeks. We freeze it. We dry it out. We thaw it. And then we grill it. It makes sense. Come on. I thought you were going to love my midlock, regardless if it was frozen. You thought I'd like that? Well, I really did. I mean, I'm, you want me to but be honest? But how's it possible, Tom? It's something different. Grill it. It's an insult to America. In this area, that's what they love. Really? Yep. You're not going to convince me on that one? Now, this is very, very good dish and a very famous dish. They come in people from far away. Dan, have you actually ever sat down and tasted that dish from start to finish? Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? No. So now I've got a chef that doesn't like what he serves. Do you have any idea how stupid that sounds? Yes. But you seem happy with it. No, not happy with it. Then stop it, Dan. I try. I try. You know, I do. <laughs> wow. How do you rate the food? I don't think it's all that much to talk about. I think we're outdated. I think it's just OK at best. But out of 10? Three or four. And you're saying, Ramsey, you need to respect my food. I did. Get out of your bubble, Tom. Get in the real world. I wish I could say thank you. How come? How come you don't ever tell your brother that the food you cook in here and you serve with him is shit? We talk all the time that the food's not that good. Did you tell him to change? You don't let him change things. I never allowed him. I up. never allowed him not he to change says anything. He tries to when do I tell off? you not to change? I've tried to take things come off. Come on, Dan. Why don't you change the menu? It's not his the fault, not my fault. The way you spoke earlier, you say four to five. That's what I'm giving to this food. Our food is good. How can you see a friend of the Chef Ramsey is not good? We got another issue there. Piece of shit. When I think I'm right, oh, I'm going to keep fighting. You know what I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep fighting and fighting when I get done. With Tom being adamant that there is nothing wrong with the food. I'm sure you've done this, folks. Chef Ramsey gets his first opportunity to see how the locals feel about the menu at the old hitching post. All right, boys. Pasta pignoli and meatloaf. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, chef. Put that in the oven to reheat, please. This is the one we want to use. That's the oldest. Wow. What is that? Tom. What is it? Frozen calamari. Did you buy them in like that? That's how it comes. Is that how you grew up watching calamari in Greece? I try it fresh with the skin on like a European. And nobody even ordered them. Nobody ordered fresh? Oh, fucking here we go. One more meatloaf coming up. Is that the meatloaf? Yeah. The frozen. Tom, you got upset with me earlier. You got upset. With me. I want you to love my meatloaf. Yeah. Can you hear the little maracas that yep. I have in Greece? Yep. I mean, honestly, do you want me to kiss your ass no. and tell you that I love your meatloaf? So, I dare you, go out in your dining room and tell your customers that you're serving that. No, I'm not going to do that. you got no balls, have you? i got a lot of balls. Mine is bigger and stronger. Yours is bigger and stronger. i got a more fucking balls. More than him and a, a lot of a half a dozen like him. You're not proud of what you serve. Because if you're proud of what you serve, you'd have no problem taking it to the dining room. I'm proud of my product, regardless if it's been on the freezer. Take it out there then. I don't wanna do that because it's too humiliating to me to go with yeah. a hazard of rock, two so pieces of middle. It's not that humiliating for you to take the money then. Oh, put it in your pockets. That's not humiliating, is it? Why don't you just admit that it's wrong? It's not wrong. 
wrong is, you if I go over here and like fucking blockhead. Them. And you think you're going to be successful serving that shit. Wrong, Thomas. You shouldn't be anywhere near this kitchen. What a disaster. Yes. I'm cooking it and I'm prison. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm struggling, Andrea, I'm struggling with who pushing the standards here. Who cares? Look at that. Does that represent you? No. The second generation running your father's restaurant? No. And if someday he lets you take over, you have to do something about this. No, I realize it. It doesn't stop you having standards. When you see it like in a big picture like this, when it's one thing after another that's getting pointed out, it's, you know, it's, it's one big mess. Carla, as you take their orders, yeah. I think it'd be nice for you to explain whether it's fresh, whether it's frozen, defrosted. OK. I want you to know what you're ordering. All right, um, the dill salmon. Salmon frozen. is frozen, yes. The shrimp scampi? Frozen. Frozen, yes. How about the crab cakes? Frozen. <laughs> All right, my order is going to be Caesar salad, which is fresh, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. As some diners rethink their orders, others regret theirs. Chicken doesn't taste fresh. How was that uh, meatloaf? It tastes like a uh, TV dinner that I get my three-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, that's being polite. It wasn't very good. No. Uh, I don't think they were fresh. You don't think they were fresh? Yes. With Chef Ramsay hearing enough of the customer complaints, he decides he needs to further investigate the practices of the kitchen. Dan. I did, I did. Yes, sir. Do you buy them like that in milk? No, we don't buy them like that. Why they like this? It's the Wall Street. Because unfortunately, those are frozen ones. I know. Sorry. Tom, I mean, honestly, why are you doing this to yourself? Those were what they were. Why are you doing this? Just smell inside there. Come on. Just smell inside there. Smells beautiful, ocean fresh. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. Kevin, can you get me Andrea, please? Andrea. Out back, please. Are you kidding me right now? So, Andrea, come around, please. You got two seconds? The scallops were serving. They're frozen ones. He's in denial. I have to talk. Relax, no, 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 yeah. I need to talk. Just talk. There's nothing wrong. I eat myself. If you pick up this bag, I pick them up myself this morning. If you take this bag, they've been in the freezer for one day or 24 hours. And back up this one, you're going to find the same seafood pork. Disagree. Go ahead and smell this one and smell that one. Tell me what the, what, what's the difference. You are trying to convince me that serving frozen food is better than fresh. It's not a frozen. They were in the fucking freezer. You buy them in the bulk fresh, you put them in the bags, you weigh them out, yes. and you freeze them. Yes, I do. And in the morning, you take out 10 bags, you get them defrost, they sit in their piss like that, and then you cook them. Yes, I do that. Right. But Sorry. you will criticize me the milk and the smell. There's no smell any difference. That's so, one from this one. And I say they smell like awesome fresh, and they do. So they smell the same once they've been frozen. Depends. If you got to go oh. one year on the freezer, one oh. day. All right. Oh. You haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Oh. They smell fresher once they're defrosted. Shit. You're fucking loopy. They smell fresher after being frozen. Oh, come on. Anybody's in a restaurant business. What? No matter who he is. Rule number one when studying to be a chef, fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better once it's frozen. Shellfish is something you never freeze. And now here you are lecturing me that that fucking thing is fresh. No. While Chef Ramsay continues to explain to Tom how his pre-cooking is having a negative impact on the food. Fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better once it's frozen. Tom remains in denial. No. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. No. He's trying to convince me that this idiotic setup is acceptable. Do you honestly think that your customers will be happy to pay for frozen shit being defrosted rapidly? They are under the impression in your fucking dining room that what you're cooking them is fresh. So you're not going to convince me that this is better than serving it fresh. What I've just said, does that make any sense? It does. It does. Thank God you're not as stubborn as your dad. If you don't like my food, don't even talk to me. I don't want you.
Oh my God. I'm extremely embarrassed. My heart is like breaking because um, this is something that I'm really proud of. And tonight just showed that I really shouldn't be proud of this. Thank you. Oh. Really disgusting. My dad, his mindset is not allowing us to go up from here. I need a drink. Andre, this can't continue. Your father's in denial. He's trying to win an argument that doesn't make sense. Welcome to my life. He's got to stop trying to convince me of these ridiculous practices, and every time. He doesn't see that they're wrong. I want this business, but I want it, I want it to function correctly. And my fear is that by the time it comes to me, what am I going to do with it? There's nothing to have. It's gone. That's my fear. I need your help to convince him that we are stopping death. Frozen shit. I can't do it without you. OK. I'll see you in the morning. Thank nice. you. Good night. With Tom claiming the community is in love with the food. Hello. Nice to, mm -hmm. Great to, see, to you. see you. Have a seat. Chef Ramsay gets up early. You willing to take some callers while we're here? Absolutely. To get more feedback from the locals. I've attempted to have a butternut squash ravioli and felt digestive issues. Ooh. The fish and my vegetables were total mush. It's dated, it's lackluster, it's in need of help. Now armed with more evidence of what he suspected, Chef Ramsay heads back to the old hitching post for a showdown with Tom and his staff. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Hello, Chef Ramsay. First of all, the one thing that I learned since I've been here is that there are a lot of bad practices taking place. Yesterday was very upsetting. Right. This morning, I went live to a local radio station. All of a sudden, the phone lines start going crazy. Lines are jammed. These complaints started coming in. Let me tell you something really important. The reason why we're in this situation, Tom, is because this whole business is run on your system. Why are you so controlling, Tom? It wasn't controlling type of thing. It was just a routine. Not as far as I'm concerned. Tom runs a business his way, and he's not open to alternative ideas. So Tom makes a decision. Everyone's got to go with it. And of a percentage of decisions, how many of them are right? I think it's 50-50 on some wow. of the items. Wow. Tom, let me tell you, you do not want to pass a liability to your daughter. Exactly. So you have a duty now to step up and do something you haven't done in seven years, and that's change. Sometimes you're stuck mentally, physically, economically, and there's no way out, and you're just hoping for a better day. But I'm always a believer of better day, better business, to do changes at any time. OK. I'm hoping that my father is ready to listen because we need a big change. We have to change immediately. And I trust you. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Let's get together. Yeah. I can't do it without you. You got my support 100%. I want to be right next to you. While Tom appears ready to finally give in and change, Wow. I mean, it looks better than last night, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chef Ramsay, with the help of a couple of locals, look at that beauty, has another major point he wants to make. Take care. Now for something fresh. Just wanted to show you something. Two meatloafs. The one on the left-hand side is a turkey meatloaf. Next to that, you've got a classic meatloaf, both made fresh. Visually, what does that look like? It's beautiful. Really? Really nice. Gorgeous looking, both of yeah. them. Right. Take a fork, please. Things need to look good, granted, but proof is in the tasting. Mm. Chef, I swear, in my life, I never taste any better. Mm. Yeah. Yum. Right. I have a confession to make. Uh -oh. This was actually made by two of your customers. Wow. What you've got to understand is to keep your business alive, you have to deliver something better than they can cook themselves at home. That is it. I do realize right now we need to change immediately. 
for much better. You know what? I was blind all this time. And I'm ready for the changes because I trust his judgment and his experience. You've got to want to do it. Absolutely. With Tom now fully understanding the errors of the past, Chef Ramsay and his team jump into high gear to give the old hitching post an exciting new identity. Right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tom, when you bought this restaurant, you didn't make any changes. Very little. Take off your blindfolds. <gasps> wow! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are we in the Oz? Beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy? <laughs> so, gone are the cranberry walls that match the cranberry napkins. We now have a stunning modern bluish grey, contemporary. Gone are those disgusting banqueting chairs. We now have some rustic, charming, authentic wooden chairs. This is amazing. Gorgeous. Have a quick look at the reception area. Oh. The whole entire area has been cleaned up. Beautiful. We did an art installation of reclaimed oh, shutters. Yes. Oh, How cool is yeah. this? It welcomes you to the restaurant. That's incredible. Ready to see the next part? Yes! Ready? Let's go down. All the way in. Oh, my god. All the booths no. are gone. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my god. <laughs> Those booths give you that claustrophobic feel. We've lightened up the dining room. We've got a proper space in here now. This is gorgeous. On the wall, we have these stunning plates. Now, I know you're Greek, and you have your traditions, but these plates are not for breaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is just amazing. Totally, I feel like I'm in a new building. I'm at the new hitching post. You happy? More than happy. <laughs> <laughs> the changes, the, the chandeliers, the colors, the photos, beautiful, all around. Everything in one night. <laughs> this is the most incredible thing I ever see. I feel on the top of the world. Only in America. To go along with the dramatic makeover. Come through, please. Wow. Is a total revamp of the food and the practices on how to prepare it. We'll be cooking fresh. Running out of things is normal. Get used to it, OK? I fully agree with you. Yep. Let's start off at the top. Mm. A delicious homemade clam chowder. Yeah. Oranges. Oh, wow. Next to that. A New England lobster roll. Yeah. A pan-seared salmon. Oh, wow. Then with the herb butter, asparagus, and roasted potatoes. Meatloaf. Look at that. Bacon wraps. Yummy. Creamy mashed potatoes, green beans, with a really nice glazed ketchup sauce. I love it. Look how good the food looks. Just beautiful. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's amazing. Jump in. All right, I'm digging in. Mm. Oh, my god. Mm. Incredible. I feel like I'm tasting at a new place, like somewhere else. Excellent meatloaf. Mm. <laughs> when you order any of our dishes from the new menu, you will be satisfaction guaranteed. I thought I, my chart was very good, but this is actually... Yeah. I have never tasted anything better, and that's the honest truth. You like it, Dan? I love it. Mm -hmm. oh, so nice. It's relaunch night, and everything feels different about this restaurant. The only thing you're gonna find in the freezer? Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> new decor, new menu, and a new boss in control. So much to do here. Okay. Controlling the standards, being assertive with the team. Okay. Pressure. I need to step up and be a leader and have a smooth show tonight. This is huge that we get it right. It's do or die. Let's have a great service. Good evening, how are you? Please, come right in. Yeah, this is a salad. Yeah? And fish and chips. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. If anything we can do for you, please let us know. OK? Thank you. Let's get ready, boys. Firing app, table 23. Two clam chowders, Caesar, and a wedge salad. Two chowders, Caesar, and a wedge, ma'am. Coming up. Perfect. Coming your way. Thank you. Ladies, pick up. App's going down for 23. What's next, please, Andre? Keep it going, yeah? Two salmon for 25. Right here. Ladies, pick up. Thank you. Come and here, now please. I need a stroganoff, a scampi, a meatloaf, and a medium rare rib. Oh, come on. So look, that's raw. Oh, yeah. oh, my Put your, God. Finger, put yes, your finger in there. You are the last line of defense, and they're just throwing food out. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. All of you. Yes, listen. The salmon, raw in the middle. 
I need one piece of fish on the fly. Now, look at me. We haven't worked this hard to start throwing food out. This lady, she's the last line of defence. Do not serve her raw salmon. Come on, bring it together. Yeah. Please, one mistake like that just throws everybody. I was worried because I want to make sure that foodie was right. Andrea, do something. Reorganize yourself. How long am I waiting for that salmon? Complete the table. Come on. There you go, Andrea. Ladies, pick up. Take those now. Thank you. Looks lovely. Good. I'm looking for 30 and 26 right now. Seconds away. Thank you. Andrea, you're doing beautiful, honey. I need a pick up. Pick it up, baby. Thank you. You know you can do it. 26. Oh, that looks beautiful, honey. Doesn't it? Delicious. Really fresh. Beyond good. It is definitely a lot better. <laughs> All right, guys, last three flips on the board. Finish strong, guys, Dan. Yeah, keep it going, yes? Yes, sir. Keep it going, Andrea. Well done. Up. Got it. Carlo, pick up 29. Andrea, so what you can do, honey. I couldn't have beaten any happier. Now, I'm going to cook everything fresh every day. Chef Ramsey proves to me it's the only way to go. Nice job, everyone. Nice, nice teamwork. That was, that was awesome. Awesome. That was good, right, Dad? Very good. I don't think my dad was 100% sure that I could do it, but I'm pretty sure I proved to him that I could do it. Um, I'm really happy. Andrea, can I see you for a couple of minutes? Sit down. Andrea, today's a big day for me. I want to present something very exciting, something very good. I'm passing over to you something you want. I'm leaving. Okay. I want you to take care of it. I want you to be successful. And you know I'm going to always be next to you whatever you need. I know. So, go out there, girl, and get them. Okay. All right? I love you, Dad. I love you, too, honey. Thank you. Give me a minute. Go ahead. It was very difficult for me, but that's my wishes. That's exactly what I want to do. She's a leader. She's a worker. She's going to be very successful. You just made her very, very happy. It's been a long time coming, and I understand the nervousness. But honestly, she can do it. I know she can do it. OK. She can do it. She had two best teachers. She can do this. Thank you. Okay, let me tell you something. What an amazing relaunch. Come on. How did it feel? <laughs> oh, great. You guys did a fantastic job. Everybody. Thank you, Chef. I feel better than ever. Andrea deserves it, and it's all hers. Mm -hmm. From the bottom of my heart. Just reaching this point today and, yeah. you know, getting the okay from my dad to step up and be in charge, it's amazing. Thanks, Dad. Yep. Thank you. Well done to you all. Thanks Brilliant. to you. Thank Keep you. Keep up the good work. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> I am the most grateful person to thank Chef for what he done for me. Chef Ramsey proves to me I can hand over the restaurant to my daughter. And right now, I could not be any happier. <sighs> I never thought I was going to be able to get through to Tom. Wow, what a stubborn man. But once he realized I was doing all this for his daughter, he was a changed man. In fact, he was a pleasure to work with. And I strongly believe in Andrea. And now, finally, after seven years, so does her father. Wow. Frozen meatloaf, cranberry and haddock. It's all Greek to me. After Chef Ramsay left, Tom kept his promise to give Andrea full control of the restaurant. Gentlemen, firing an app for table four, Caesar and chili. The old hitching post is on its way to becoming not just a successful restaurant. Excellent. Perfect, really perfect. Thank, Thank you for joining us. But it also fulfilled the dream that a father had for his daughter. We're so happy for you. We are. 